the United Soccer Coach. Hi, and welcome to St. Mary's, where tonight we have a Western Buckeye League matchup between the Rough Riders playing here at home and the Wapakoneta Redskins. Hi, everyone. Garrett Beansmith alongside Josiah Stober. And Josiah, we have an early match in the Western Buckeye League. League nights are always important, trying to get those points in the standings. But when you have two potential teams that are vying for the top spot, it always adds to the intrigue. Yeah, absolutely. You know, look at these two teams. They know each right other very well, uh, played each other twice last year, both won goal games, uh, won by St. Mary's. Uh, so, you know, these teams, you know, a lot of them play together in club. They know each other very well. And as you said, we look at this league, it's going to be very tight at the top. You know, we always know about Shawnee, you know, and Kent and these teams. And, and with Walpalk and St. Mary's, both teams vying for that top spot, it's a big night tonight in the league. Yeah, you look at St. Mary's, a team that's finished second or third the last couple of years behind Shawnee. This is a big one. They got high praise from Wapakoneta head coach Scott Brinkman admitting this is a very good team and with coach Josh Hurtenstein over at St. Mary's, that club has been on the rise the last several years and looking to get off to WBL play building off of a win already here this year. We'll take a, take a break, come on back, we'll get you the starters, and then we'll give you the opening kickoff of tonight's action between St. Mary's and Wapakoneta on WOSN. Hi again from St. Mary's here at Mansfield and Josiah Snowber. We bring in tonight's action between the Redskins from Wapakoneta traveling today. They're in the white jerseys and in the black kits tonight, St. Mary's, Mary's Memorial Rough Riders. Get you the starters here as we look at Wapakoneta entering today with a, a record of 3-1. and one. They're 1-0 in WBL play. St. Mary's is 5-1 and one with the 1-0 and oh mark again in the WBL. Opening kick going for St. Mary's. And we'll take a look at the black kits to start tonight in goal. Caden Balwig is a junior in net. Off to uh, off to our far left right now for St. Mary's. Cody Burt is a junior. He's wearing number one. Number two is Quinn Holtzapple, a senior. Senior number three, Easton Kraft. A.J. Deringer is a senior wearing number four. Number five is Jack Hurtenstein. He's also a senior. Sophomore number seven is Vincent Holtzapple. Wyatt Chapman is a junior. He wears number 11 for St. Mary's. Number 13 is Brayden Keller. He is a sophomore. Junior Doug Rupert is number 19. And Reese Triplett is number 26 tonight. He is a junior. There's the St. Mary's starters right now as Kraft takes a turn and has a centering pass deflected away for St. Mary's and cleared away for Wapakoneta. Let's meet the visiting Redskins here as we see St. Mary's starting to attack that plus third. This one's going to go goal side, knocked down by Gannon Casebolt and goes across goal line, and that'll be a corner kick coming up for St. Mary's. Taylor Eccles was number one. Keaton Lenhart is number two for Wapakoneta. Ethan Isard is number three. Preston Meyer starts. He wears number four. Number five is Dylan Whitehead. Number seven is Austin Bump. Just had that last uh, clear away momentarily a couple of minutes ago for Wapak. This corner's going to center up and... Right now, Wapakoneta is able to get it away. Here's the rest of their starting lineup tonight. Kyle Beach wears number nine. Gavin Ainsworth wears number 11. Number 20 is Ross Honigford. And 21, Cutter Coffee. Already some early action, Josiah, as St. Mary's starting to really press up forward in that attack third. Yeah, they've done a really good job so far early, you know, getting the ball through the middle, looking to switch the pitch as quickly as they can. Had a couple opportunities just on that last corner, a great corner. Unfortunately, the... Uh, St. Mary's Rough Rider wasn't able to get a get ahead on it, but we see some really good action here early on. That's going to escape the boundary and go off of Wapakoneta. Looked like Whitehead the nearest to it for Wapakoneta. Wapak's coached by Scott Brinkman and Josh Hurtensneed is the the head man for St. Mary's here at home. We right now take a look. You know, Josiah St. Mary's got some early notoriety. The first couple of polls that have come out through this through the year. Clocked in at number 16 this last week, thanks to their five and one start. The combined, you know, looking at their their season, uh, just a one loss Troy team, the only defeat. And now St. Mary's pushing it downfield, and Kraft with a centering pass and a launch up over top of the cage. Hot shot over the top of Holt the Apple, Holt Quinn Holt Apple, the, the goal kick for the Redskins. Give the ball right back to Wapakoneta. 
Yeah, and you know, Crafts had a lot of room early on that right side as we see that diagonal ball. They're playing him early, and he's able to cut along the end line, find a teammate, and unfortunately, they just haven't been able to finish. Keaton Lenhart does the goal kick there for Wapakineta as they get things here to the left side. And Honigford with a pass ahead, looking to the direction of Austin Bump, and it's going to go out of his reach and go down near the corner of the first couple of minutes of action here Last at St. Mary's. We see the shadows start to stretch across the pitch here on a what was a 7 o'clock start. These later starts able to, to shield us here at, at St. Mary's. The, the sun setting right behind us. The home and away fans on the far side still taking in that early fall. <laughs> Bakage over there. Yeah, we got the, the nice advantage over here of being in this nice shade of the trees here on the sidelines. And as we look at both teams, kind of how they start their formation, you know, Walpaw coming out looks like in a 4 2 3 1, looking to keep their, their holding, middle, holding midfielder centered and tight to try to slow down this attack from the Rough Riders. And uh, as for the Rough Riders coming out also and in that 4 2 3 1, but looks like their midfielder is a little more in a diamond so they can send that extra midfielder up a little bit higher. So we'll see how the strategy early of, you know, coaches trying to see how the game plays out a little bit um, before they start sending a lot more men forward. Yeah, those early adjustments, you, know, you might start one way. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the way you finish on your defensive alignment because the momentum or the even the aggression you don't normally see. But, you know, you got to wonder, you know, as close as these two teams are in, in distance, there's a lot of club you know, crossover and very, very aware of these these two programs. You know, I don't know how many secrets are left. No, and you know, we know the rivalry, like you said, the distance, you know, in football, um, but also here in the soccer, especially over the last couple of years of these teams playing each other so often, you know, playing each other, ending up in tournament against each other. And so knowing each other very well, um, you know, uh, talking to, to Coach Brinkman a little bit before the game, was talking about just how, you know, he's coached um, with St. Mary's coach. So they've been together, you know, coaching a lot of these guys uh, throughout the year, but they also know each other as opponents. So should be, a, a, you know, like I said, just a great match uh, between these two teams. And there's an early look for Quinn Holtz Apple. He's able to get that pass in a case bolt and into the back of the net. And St. Mary's takes a 1-0 lead at the 34-43 mark of this first half. We'll take a break, come back, and talk about how that came to be on WOSN. Welcome back to St. Mary's as Quinn Holtzapple knocked in a first score of the game for the Rough Riders from here at Memorial and Josiah, that was one of those at the top of the 15. He kind of shaked and baked, found some room, and they were able to pop that right through on the right side of the net. And, you know, what did you see from your perspective? Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's just, just putting those balls on frame, you know, and finding it. And, you know, as you said, did a really good job in traffic, had a couple bodies in front of him, but was able to just let it go, and, you know, and find a way into that side netting. So, you know, a great start here for this Rough Riders team, exactly how they want, you know, kind of expect a lot of goals um, tonight. You know, both these teams, you know, playing each other, coming down to one goal games um, in the past, but lots of goals have been scored. So, you know, kind of expect that tonight too. Here's another try for Holtzapple. That's going to go wide for Quinn. Look at his season. That's his seventh shot that's made its way through. He That's the second most on this St. Mary's team. And for his career, that's going to add up to be number 13. Young man that has been all WBL first team from last year as a, as a junior. And as a sophomore, he was a second teamer for St. Mary's. There he goes. Sends a pass this way to A.J. Derringer before it's knocked back for Wapakoneta. Still the early stages here in WBL action. Just the second go-round of league play for these two. Right now that's the same across the league except for Ottawa Glandor if they've here at a one and one mark. Well, and as you see here early is St. Mary's is really dominating the possession here of the ball. You know, if Walpaw gains possession, St. Mary's wins it back very quickly. And we see here that they're just taking their time trying to probe that Redskins defense and try to find the gaps. 
Here's Cody Burt, pass into the middle for Holtzapple. Heavy defense for Connor Coffey. And Holtzapple fires this one just wide to the left. He's finding a matchup he likes up there, certainly, and is able to get off a couple of shots, three or four of those early on, and it's barely eight minutes have gone by. So Keena Leonard will line up this goal kick for Wapakineta. Retrigger the action here. Headed off the goal kick by Rupert. Going to go across the chalk and be inbounded for Wapakineta here, but not without a quick change. Angel Coca checks on. Well, and you wonder with the switch, it might be a little bit of a tactical um, you know, switch here to see if they can get a little more bodies in that midfield. St. Mary's has done a really good job of, of really right above that back line of the Redskins is finding a lot of possession there. So they'll see if with this change, you know, if the coach saw something he wanted to change a little bit and, and get a sub on the pitch. Hey, Gavin Ainsworth, a little slide trying to get that Souvenir ball, ball down the, the far sideline, but to no avail for Wapakineta. So St. Mary's takes over. Cody Burt into the middle for Deringer. Heads this one to the top of the box to Kraft. Looks like an offside, offside call. We'll halt things here for a moment. For yeah, second offsides there we'll for number three for this Rough Riders team, Easton Kraft. Um, but doing a great job in that number nine spot of really trying to push that back line of Walpock back. And, you know, that's what you want out of your number nine is See, you know, you're always those defenders checking over their shoulder to know where you're at, and he's doing a great job of running behind that line any chance he gets. So, um, but that's part of, you know, soccer is those offsides calls. Starting to see some more of Wapakineta. They have not been able to really establish themselves on their third of the field. A lot of looking over here, panning right, and held on to for Gannon Casebolt. In net right now for Wapak. That one nothing advantage for St. Mary's continues to hold. We're well over 10 minutes into the contest here in the first half. We have two halves of 40 for you here tonight. Tune it in and we've got, we'll do our best. It's early It's early in the season, Josiah. So we it's an opportunity to do some teaching to the audience as we go on. It's, we also teach, teach ourselves, well, you probably don't need as much, but I do, to get the refreshers of the, of the, of the rules of soccer, but oh, it, it comes back quickly. Here's a throw in on the way for St. Mary's. Trying to go in Kraft's direction, headed out by Wapakineta. This will bring up a corner kick Redskins coming up for St. Mary's. And to do the honors, White Chapman will go down there to that far corner. Yeah, another corner here for St. Mary's is you know, as a coach, you know, these are one of the, you know, kind of set pieces that, you know, there's no timeouts um, for, you know, in the game of soccer. So these are one of these times where you kind of, you know, you work in, in training, trying to find what you can do to get an advantage. Um, and you, you really want to take advantage mm -hmm. of those opportunities. And that is nice ch chance there for Holt Sample, you know, just saying, you know, catching up with you before the game. and. One of the, you know, you're a soccer coach yourself, so one of the things that clicked for you early on when you started to take that on was, you know, make, making these comparisons to basketball. And I think for folks in this area, that's an easy, you know, comparison. You can kind of see the flow of the game in that way. But, you know, but, but what you're able to do there is you, that's similar to kind of like a baseline out of bounds play. It's, you, you know you're close to the basket. You can maybe make some things happen, force the action there, and that's one item that St. Mary's trying to do right there pretty successfully. So correct, expand, or? Yeah, no, ab absolutely, you know, and playing basketball well, in this area, you know, growing up playing really basketball, um, you know, and then and jumping over to the, the – the soccer world, you know, it was a little bit different. You know, obviously, we're all so used to playing with our hands, you know, to, to playing with your feet. But uh, very, there's a lot of basketball that goes into to playing soccer. You know, obviously, more players, you know, bigger playing surface. But, um, you know, even as I, I coach and was telling you earlier, a lot of times I relate, you know, the game of soccer mm -hmm. to the game of basketball and, you know, just the movement and, and what you're trying to do, um, you know, on the soccer pitch, you know, can be related to basketball. So, uh, like I said, a lot of correlation. You know, if you don't know anything about this game, you know, you're like, well, why don't they score enough? 
Not the case here. As a big shot. <laughs> AJ Deringer from a deep, roughly 25, 26 yards out. And that's one of those that knocked it through from way downtown. 27-42 to go in the opening half. We'll take a break tell you how that developed on WOSN. Welcome you back to St. Mary's, where the Riders have just taken a 2-0 advantage thanks to the second goal of the game, the first of the night for A.J. Deringer. And it's 2-0 St. Mary's, and they're not satisfied with that. They're continuing to turn on the pressure. No, and that's something you would expect out of a team that's ranked in the state, you know, to continue to put that pressure on. And as we've seen here, with the, the majority of possession that they've maintained throughout this first half, you know, they've continued to push. You know, you know, like I said, they're, they're not settling. You know, they're not sitting back, you know, just letting Walpole get a little momentum. You know, they're continuing to attack. And once again, they're here for a set piece, an opportunity that's, you know, pretty far down. So see if they can get somebody with a head on it. This will be Wyatt Chapman to do the kick. And that was Deringer's third goal. And uh, that is of the season this year. Give him credit for his 18th in his career for the senior. Wapakana able to defend that. Keep it here near the near sideline. And right now, St. Mary's will have to uh, throw it in here. AJ Deringer. And the Skins will try to set some things up here. Here's Eccles heading back the other way, other way towards the towards their goal. One of their key members of their team, Kyle Beach, wearing a number nine. Haven't had a chance to shout his name out very often, but he's right there in the center of the pitch. Two-time first-teamer in the Western Buckeye League as a freshman and a sophomore back for his junior year. So still some time to give on this Wapakoneta program that's produced a lot of talent the last several years. Well, and as we see here early, just Walpock struggling to, to get some, string some passes together, you know, just gain that possession that they need, you know, that they've been accustomed to a lot this year, you know, coming into this game, you know, three and one on the year uh, with their only loss being to a very good collided team, mm -hmm. you know, so um, we'll see if, you know, they're able to throw a few more yeah, bodies like forward, sure. see if they can gain some possession and, and kind of turn this game around. Yeah, you mentioned that Kaleida defeat. The Wildcats start this year. They took down three straight WBL teams, De Defiance, OG, and Wapak, all right in a row to begin the year. To be touched back in, into the box for Case Bolt to send it out near midfield for Wapakoneta. Good step in front. For Coca and St. Mary's, that defense not letting Wapakoneta really through. And there's Kraft trying to get through the top of the box and contact and it'll send things back Wapak's way. Yeah, it looked like they called maybe just like a little push in the back, you know, gain some advantage on that call. And, you know, the official was about 15 yards away, so had probably the best view of anybody uh, to see what happened there, and uh, ball to Walpock. Lenhart did that kick there, got it right back. Sent to the left for Honigford. It's ripped away by Deringer again. And a nice poke away by Meyer. Preston Meyer over there for Wapakoneta. Kind of disrupt the momentum. St. Mary's, though, still pushing it ahead. Throw in Meyer. Now Meyer will throw it in for Wapak. Two early goals for St. Mary's. That's where we are right now on our scoreboard on WOSN. Quinn holds Apple. Five and a half minutes into the game, and then a few minutes later, A.J. Deringer got it done for St. Mary's. Now a little momentum for Wapak, or at least penetration down to that third, but knocked away. And now let's see if Wapakoneta can get some feet set and headed heading that direction because it hasn't been a whole lot of activity on that side of the pitch tonight. No, and they haven't had a lot of space, and they were able to switch the ball quickly, you know, get it out to that right wing and uh, tried to find that runner, you know, behind the line and weren't able to do that. And we have another foul here on St. Mary, so an opportunity for Walpock to, to push some numbers higher up the pitch. 
So Wapak will have. They'll have a kick in here and going on in. So they'll have some players sent to the top of the box. Here to do the kick and send it down in. Headed out by St. Mary's. Braden Keller was the man that redirected that ball away from his own net. And that's going to be grasped by Caden Ballwing. Snatched up by Ballwing. 22 and a half, at least approaching here. Our first half clock. This will dribble ball the way back, so it goes from goalie to goalie here. Wapakoneta, 3-1 three, one, three one star. They've won their last three. Jackson Center out of a Glandorf and Liberty Benton. For St. Mary's, they're looking to stack a third straight win Last tonight after doing that Ruffin. to start the year. 3-0 beginning, lost to Troy the on the road, the and wins over Sydney in Bank defiance a week ago West. to get their first WBL win. 25 goals for to 7 allowed for St. Mary's, 19-7 the total for Wapakoneta. but two nothing early for the Riders. Well, St. Mary's continues to find that success just above the 18 yard box. You know, those little one, two passes are finding some gaps between this Walpole defense and, and uh, another opportunity here on a set piece coming out for a corner. It was Reese Triplett on the last attempt deflected off by Wapakineta and that's what sets up these corner kicks. If, the defending team has a go beyond their own goal line. The offensive team gets a chance to set up a corner kick, or at least, you know, whose ever goal that is, the opposite. So Jeffries will line this up for St. Mary's. And St. Mary's decides to go short. See a good ball into the box there, right at the six. Unable to get another foot on. Walpock has, has been able to clear, but St. Mary's gain possession back here. And Looks to continue attacking it. Great Austin, move there by Walpock. Austin Bump ripped that away from Keller. St. Mary's is able to repossess the ball. Cody Burt sends it upfield for Daringer. And now Coca will regain it for Wapak. Set upfield by Eccles. What, what these two, both of these coaches noted for things they wanted to do tonight was possess the ball. So far, so good for St. Mary's. Yeah, absolutely. You know, really keeping possession in the area, the, the pitch where you want to, it's right in that middle and, you know, really outnumbering Walpock defenders in there, you know, able to slide and get the ball from side to side and the opportunity here all by himself and wasn't able to make contact here and looks like they're going to call the line off the rough riders. goal, goal kick. kick. Coming up for the Redskins. That was kind of Russ chasing it down for St. Mary's. Now Wapakineta will set it up. Will be taken by Meyer. Preston Meyer will line up the goal kick for the Skins. On one thing every coach talks about as a soccer coach is, can we switch the ball, the point of attack? You know, and, and St. Mary's has done a really good job even on that last possession there. Had it on the left side, got it all, all the way across the pitch to the right side. Wasn't able to make contact on the ball, but you can see here is they're really trying to switch the point of attack. And when you do that, you make the entire defense shift from one side of the field to the other. And there's a lot more space. And the team that does it more, you know, will have a lot more opportunities at goal. Here's Aiden Jeffries, and we have a stoppage here. And Waplock continues to just pretty much pick up and go. Taylor Eccles got the attack, but Caden Ballwig able to keep the calm head in some of the chaos and pick the ball up and keep it at a goal. Yeah, and smart play there by Walpalk as, you know, St. Mary's thought the ball was going the other way. The official called it for, for Walpalk. Walpalk played quick, found that open runner, and just, just a heavy touch by the, the Walpalk number nine. Tripped up there in the middle of the, in the pitch for Holtz Apple. But St. Mary's will hold on. They'll throw it back in. Doug Rupert back into the game for St. Mary's. He jogs back in. Give Reese Triplett a breather here. 2-0 Riders. Quinn Holtzapple, A.J. Derringer got scores. 
in this opening half. That ball got into the box. Kraft thought about sending it on in and just didn't quite have the angle inside. Well, the ball fell right to his right foot on his strong leg. Found a little bit of space and kind of shanked it a little bit to the left and unfortunately didn't find the back of the net. They're going to get Wapakineta on a, a fraction here. So Quinn Holdsample with a direct kick, and it's going to go right on down and through. His second goal of the game for St. Mary's, and it comes at 17:42 of the opening half. That's something right now, Josiah. As I look down at the the goal sheet, 43 seconds, 42, 42. So there's something with that. It could be nothing, but regardless, it's St. Mary's three. And Wapakoneta Zero will be back to talk about that previous goal on WOSN. Welcome back to St. Mary's, where the Rough Riders have an early 3-0 advantage just over halfway through the first half of action in a WBL action between... St. Mary's and Wapak, three goals of this opening half. Quinn Holtzapple now with two for St. Mary's. And he, Josiah, he was able to set that one up now off of a direct kick and just banged it right through. Yeah, and kind of it looked like, you know, side footed it and curved it into the net and threw the goalkeeper off. Looked like he got on the wrong foot when he jumped up in the air. And, you know, like we said, it's, you know, just good soccer, playing quick. You know, sometimes you think a coach would say, put it in and here we go again. Yep. Is it something 42? Nope, it's 1702. 17 We'll keep around right here as Holt's Apple already a hat trick in the first half. Now he is far none the leading scorer of the St. Mary's team here in 2022. Entered the, entered the game tonight with nine goals on the year through the first six games, and now he's racked up three more. And St. Mary's off to a brilliant start, 4 0. Yeah, you know, right off of, you know, a restart there, game possession, got up the field quickly, found their man, and was able to put it right in the back of the net. And, you know, like you said earlier, St. Mary's is not slowing down at all, continuing to put the pressure up and, and forcing Walpock to get some possession. And, you know, just Walpock's really struggling with that area right now. It's just getting a little possession, you know, connecting some passes. You know, if they can do that, then they've found some, some space behind that St. Mary's defense, but it's become few and far between. You look at another key for St. Mary's today was about accuracy, shooting accuracy, and that has been one they've been efficient on here today. I mean, I think that's now two goals off of set pieces as Austin Bump trying to maneuver his way down inside the box for Wapakoneta, and lines this one right into the hands of Caden Balling. The junior keeper for St. Mary's keeps it a four nothing contest. And a great job there by Brayden Keller. Just kept him in front, let him make a, a quick move to his left, but made, a, made him cut down his angle, made it easier for his goalkeeper to put it right in his hands. When you look at you know, recent history of the, these two programs, specifically of talking about the, the players that have been in the program and are still in the program, it's been a lot of close contests. Still a lot of soccer to be played here tonight for Wapakoneta to chip away potentially throughout the evening but you look at the tournament matchup last year it was a five to four victory for St. Mary's the regular season meeting was a four three win for the Riders the two years before that they played in the regular season and the two years before both in 2020 2019 and it in ties so this is the in the last time Wapakoneta beat St. Mary's was in 2018 it was on this field in October of 2018 but you see those results and you see close contests, real back and forth and good soccer early on. And we've seen that today, but St. Mary's has just been able to find a way to break through and get a couple of goals past Gannon Casebolt today to build a 4 nothing lead well before halftime. Yeah, well, you can tell they found that success in the middle of the pitch. And, and like I said earlier is, you know, defensively, that's the area you want to be compact and tight. And, you know, they've just found a, a little bit of space and they've done a really good job, you know, uh, of those little touches, those tight touches in, in those tight areas, you know, moving the ball quickly and then switching the point of attack and finding those runners on the outside. And they've done a really good job tonight. And, you know, like I said, they're not, they're not getting, putting their foot off the pedal. Not at all. Meanwhile, Wapakoneta still trying to inch their way up this sideline. 
Ross Honigford. Back to Preston Meyer, and it's deflected. A.J. Derringer has a look at it for St. Mary's, but it's cleared out by Angel Coca. And uh, St. Mary's with a man down. We'll step out, take a break. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Back at St. Mary's where it's 4-0 Riders. They'll have restart of the contest here, just above their own 15. And got halfway through there, Josiah, but redirected by Wapakoneta. They are able to stand firm on that possession. And here we go, see if, you know, the, the difference we've seen tonight, too, when St. Mary's pushes up the pitch, they have a lot of numbers. You know, the couple times Walpock has gained possession, you know, it's really one on two, one on three. You know, haven't had the ability to get, to hold possession enough to get their players up the pitch. So St. Mary's continues to do a great job of well, just possessing the ball long enough to get their numbers forward, you know, and then finding those gaps in the Walpock defense. And toss back in. So stay with St. Mary's here up this near sideline. Be sure to check out the WOSN app. It's free, easiest way to follow local high school sports. Nobody covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search for it in the App Store or on the Android Play Store. Great tool on Friday nights and then all winter long. Basketball Good season each and every night. Here on the scoreboard tonight, an app would show 4 nothing St. Mary's so far. So we approach the halftime break about 12 minutes and three quarters before that. As Cody Burt ripped a loose ball for St. Mary's, lets it rip and wide of the wide of the goal to the off to the right. Be a substitution for Wapak before they execute the goal kick. Aiden Schneider. Well, all these St. Player, St. Mary's players have a little bit more confidence now, up four nothing. You know, have put some some shots on frame from distance. So we saw that there as an opportunity. Just had about two yards of space and thought, you know, I'm going to rip it with my right foot and just pushes it a little bit to the right. A little back and forth right, there in near the boundaries. So Wapakoneta will toss it quickly right back in. Redirected back by Connor Rust. And we'll do it again. Hang out over here for a minute. Wapa Canada, there's a two and one disadvantage. Trying to get through the teeth of the St. Mary's defense. And then they get it up there, middle of the field for Kyle Beach. Long pass deep down the pitch. And between Keller and Eccles there at that top corner. Well, we've seen it a couple times tonight with Keller, you know, just doing a really good job, you know, staying on pace, you know, with the speed that Walpock throws up front and, you know, just playing his angles really well, keeping them in front and you know, was able to just clear it, that long ball out of bounds. And sometimes that's the best thing to do. Exactly. Is just clear it and then let your defense reset and get back your shape um, as a team. So, you know, he's done a really smart player um, on that back for the St. Mary's team. It's been pretty interesting to see just how the whole unit works together. You have you know the midfielders doing such a nice job on defense, not even letting Wapakoneta get back to the middle backs. But when they do, it's like they're rested up, they're geared up. Okay, I got some action, and they have gone after it here early in this game. Well, and you can kind of see on that defense, you know, the, the backers, the outside backers for St. Mary's continue to push up really high, put a lot more pressure, really outnumber this Walpock team in the midfield, and that's where they're winning all the balls. Yeah, right here, they're well, well beyond midfield with the ball deep down in the St. Mary's end. And they get bumped out for Wapakoneta. It's awesome. Bump tried to get beyond midfield, but not for long for Wapak. Sliding stop for Preston Meyer. Holds Apple Derringer and also Chapman there for St. Mary's. Just a wide pass off the foot of Reese Triplett will give the ball back to the Skins. Just below 10 to play before the halftime break. 4-0 for St. Mary's. Three goals for Quinn Holtzapple. 
Looking for some position. Good body control for Chapman. Tried to poke it ahead for East, Easton Kraft, but wasn't able to get there. A little too much mustard on it and picked up by Case Bolt, so he kills the possession right there. Says, nope, we're not going to let that continue. And yeah, now Wamba. Really a great though possession there from, from Chapman. Used his body, used his size to gain possession of the ball. You know, look for it. You can tell they got some chemistry up there mm -hmm. between those two players. Always looking for each other, making those runs, you know, just a little bit too far on that last possession. There's the old, the old box out there for you. Work to his advantage. Holtz Apple pops this one up towards the right side for Triplett. Sends it back up high and a clean steal for Aiden Schneider. He'll boot this one down the sideline. There's Keller. He'll turn around this ball and pop it yeah, up over top of the St. Mary's bench. Now Wapakoneta can advance a touch here on the offensive end. So get to the middle of the field for Holtz Apple and he'll position it the way he does. Terringer really flips the field there, goes from the near side of the far end. Picked up by Lenhardt of Wapakoneta. And just it's, the control has just been so good to see for St. Mary's really commanding the game. Holtz Apple, a solid shot on goal, but right at Gannon Case Bolton. He secured the save. Yeah, not a lot, not, not a lot of pressure from Walpock early. Right when St. Mary's wins the ball, there's just a lot of space for them to turn find their teammates, play those one-twos, you know, and get in between the gaps between their defense. So, um, you know, St. Mary's just continues to put the pressure on Walpock. And even when they lose possession of the ball, you know, they've got two, three defenders there ready to get the ball and forcing Walpock to play a little bit more direct. There the keeper, Ballwig, comes way out of his position and fires this one near the stands. We see Dylan Whitehead back out for Wapak. He'll come to give Austin Bump a rest. St. Mary's, Wapakoneta among the, the pack of five at 1-0 in the WBL through the first round of games from last week. Wabach a win over Ottawa Glandorf, and for St. Mary's, as we mentioned earlier, a win over Defiance. And Walpock continue to try to find those diagonal balls, um, but St. Mary's once again just putting a lot of pressure on it, and a great ball here to switch the point of attack for St. Mary's and allowing St. Mary's to get four or five numbers up, and Kraft once again wins the ball, and Great tackle there by number four to give Walpock a chance well, to get back and gain their shape. And Preston Meyer Throw in crap. helps Wapakoneta out there. It'll be St. Mary's send this one in with the throw. And a goal side attempt knocked down by Case Bolts. And it will stay at 4-0. Almost to the six minute mark on our scoreboard here this evening. First half of action, we'll have a fresh 40 after the halftime break. Last touch, Rough Riders, throw in Ainsworth. And speaking of 40, Josiah, did you know, TV 44 is celebrating anniversary number 40 this year. Part of the celebration, a $40 thank you, part of the fundraising here, this current campaign. You can donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or call 419-339-4444. Part of that, you might have seen the, the documentary that came out near the tail end of the summer. Really, really well done telling the story of the station and WOSN's beginnings a number of years back. So really great things and could, wouldn't be able to make it all happen without all of the wonderful viewers out there to help support us. The, the sponsors uh, on the games trying to make it happen as well. So we thank you so much for all the community support from everywhere that it comes from all around West Central and Northwest Ohio. 
And absolutely, just the, the impact that TV44 has made um, on this area. And like you said, WSN and what we, we enjoy doing, coming here and, and talking about local sports and, you know, the joy of just seeing the, the great athletes that, we, that have come through this area um, and, and just everything that we get to do that involved in that and talking about sports. So, um, you know, we, but it comes down to, to, you know, the support that we get, you know, and the local communities that, that buy into what we're doing here um, at WSN and TV44. So, um, you know, as you said, a big anniversary coming up and, you know, just excited for many, many more years to come. You got that right, Josiah, as we play on here in, in Ford Zero plays in with the theme right now. That's the score on the scoreboard here these, this afternoon for St. Mary's over Wapakoneta as we inch down towards the halftime break. And we're starting to see that, you know, kind of that winding out period, Josiah. What, what are you seeing with these two teams just kind of going back and forth? Here, a lot of middle third action, a couple of attacks from St. Mary's, but, but still not letting up for Wapak to get leaked down on offense. No, Wapak looks like they've calmed down a little bit, you know, especially on the defensive side. Um, but as you can see, at St. Mary's, you can see what they're trying to do is, you know, get one quick switch um, on the pitch from one side to the other and then try to play that diagonal ball to those runners um, going behind the back line of the, the four um, of Walpock. So you can kind of see they continue to do it, had a lot of success early. Walpock's kind of settling in now um, as a team and we'll see if they have, that allows them to gain a little bit more possession here to finish out this first half. Set it down the near side and it's trying to get established here, I'm sure. Coach Brinkman would like to see a goal here before the break, but right now, the way St. Mary's defense has been playing, that has been a tough task to this point. There's another direct kick for St. Mary's. Holtzapple will line it up, already three in. This is quite a ways out. This is going to be bending back towards the front corner of the goal and almost through the wicket to Case Bolt, but he's able to cover it right up. Easton Kraft was right there just in case he bobbled it once more and it squeaked away, but Wapak able to hold off the threat. Yeah, and that kick from Holt's apple, you know, got a lot of spin on it. So you can tell from the, the goalkeeper, goalkeeper just trying to read it as it was coming down and almost overran it again. I'm on that possession, but was able to, to corral it and, and hold it long enough for uh, the officials to call it for him. See this played in that back portion for St. Mary's. And knocked down ahead towards midfield. That's where Wapak will try to turn the possession, but Kraft not letting go of it. And he rips it away there. Kraft toes forward for triplet. Tries to turn the corner, centers one up, and knocked down by Keaton Lenhardt and almost squeaked on through again. Here's what it looked like the play was broken up. Live, live. St. Mary's, or make that wall puck able to redirect it. Last touch over the end line off the Redskins results. Yeah, Lenhardt did a really good job of reading that bounce off the wall puck defender, and it kind of fell right to his feet and struck a ball really well across goal, and he thought it was going in the back of the net and just went a little bit wide. Redskins able to keep that ball out of the box. And a long pass up the field and turned ahead. Ian Tester, or make that to Taylor Eccles, and they turn the corner and fire it in there, but we got a foul against Wapakoneta in the meantime. One minute. And Taylor Eccles got moving and a little bit of a heavy touch there and got it in front of the St. Mary's defender and used his hands to push off and a little bit unfortunate because he was able to strike the ball and went in the back of the net. There's Holt Zappel, makes one man miss, gets by another. Does he have enough real estate? And he runs out of it there, tries to make the dive. As the clock continues to roll, the final 30 seconds of the first half, a four goal, open 40 for the Rough Riders of St. Mary's three came from Quinn Holtzapple, A.J. Derringer with the other one. And the Riders probably feeling good going in here at the halftime break. Ten, nine, As they count eight, us down. Seven, six, five, four. Right in the middle of the field. Three, That'll two, advantageous place one. to really do anything with here. And we just roll out the clock. 
40 in the books. We'll ha hit halftime when we come back. We'll get you the start of the second half with St. Mary's leading Wapakoneta by a score of 4-0 on WOSN. We welcome you back to St. Mary's, where the Rough Riders hold a 4-0 lead at the start of the second half over the Wapakoneta Redskins. Garrett Mansfield next to Josiah Stober. And Josiah, you know, kind of breaking down that first half. St. Mary's picking up four goals. And right now, if you're Wapakoneta, would you be looking for something early to try to get some momentum going? Or what's the what do you think the strategy is coming into the second 40? Well, I'm sure Coach Brinkman was telling them is take your time. We have 40 minutes. You know, we don't have to rush anything, but obviously you get one early. You know, soccer's are really about momentum, you know, and see if you can, as a team, you know, get some a little bit of momentum, you know, a little bit more possession, a couple of shots on goal, you know, get your team moving on, on the on the right foot. And we'll see right here is a good opportunity. Ooh, a great strike there by Walpock. Just went across the frame, but nobody nobody on the other end. First quarter of the game for Wampok tonight. Haven't had a whole lot of opportunities, and there's a little shove from behind for St. Mary's. Gives Wampakineta another opportunity to push things forward. A lot of activity off to the right end of the field throughout the first half because that's where St. Mary's was attacking in the, the first half. Now we're, we're turning around, thinking we're going to be looking back the other way, but here we are, still situated on that end. Got a lovely moon rising up behind the side of the, the field. The lights are on, but the way the, the moon looks tonight, we might not need it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of positivity here out of Walpock early in this second half as been able to, to possess the ball a little bit more. Got another shot on frame. Um, those were few and far between in the first half. And so we'll see if they can keep a little bit of this momentum and gain a little bit more possession. And, you know, but as for St. Mary's, you know, as a team, is you don't you don't want to get lax here. Give up an easy one early on and let Walpock back in the game. So Walpock doing a good job of just being a little bit more aggressive here in the second half. And, I think they started out a little bit too timid, and St. Mary's took advantage of it. And we'll see if St. Mary's can continue to, to be aggressive here in the second half. Yeah, did find a couple of goals off of sets in that first 40 minutes. Take the, that 4 nothing advantage as we see things right now. Now the Riders trying to manufacture some additional scoring. As they try to push it. Long attempt, batted away. It still stays north of the goal line, and the keeper, get a case bolt, is able to recollect that ball before it goes beyond the goal line. Saves a corner for St. Mary's here. And St. Mary's scoring a little bit of a variety of ways tonight. You know, a couple long balls, um, just like that last one, about 25 yards out, a good strike, and forcing the keeper, you know, to make a save there and. So they've done a little bit of everything, like you said, offset pieces, you know, off some corners, um, had some ability, you know, got some good shots, you know, really playing good soccer early in that first half, switching the point of attack, uh, finding those wide players out in space, you know, looking for those crosses, and, um, you know, we'll see if they can continue that success as we look here early in the second half. See, Wapak set something up here on the left side, looking in the direction of Whitehead. Can he... Keep the positioning as he kind of turns to face goal. He's going to bump this one back a touch. Angel Coca is there, heading in the wrong direction, but he's able to turn, head back upfield, being pestered by Ethan Craft, or Easton Craft, excuse me. And the pass well, continues to go upfield, and Wapak loses the handle. Yeah, an unfortunate touch there by Eccles, but you know, probably the longest amount of possession Walpock's had all night there, you know, was able to start on the left side, you know, find, you know, their midfielder, get it out to the right. So, you know, like I said, a lot of positivity here early in this second. Good looking shot from Austin Bump, but deflected by St. Mary's. And will go off of St. Mary's as the, the sprint for the ball near the boundary results in Wapak getting the throw in. About as good of a look as we've seen so far for the red and white. 
And that'll leak down underneath the goal line. We'll see who the last touch was on, and it was on Wapbox. So St. Mary's will take over with a goal, goal kick. Line. Goal kick coming up for the Rough Riders, taken by Holtzapp. Yeah, here's the kick in. And Taylor Eccles couldn't quite keep that hemmed in for Wapakineta. Jack Hurtenstein sends it on up the field. Easton Kraft using his size to keep that possession. St. Mary's gets some help on the back end. Cody Burt sprinting up and moving it back towards the, the towards the goal. And redirected for Eccles. And it wrestled away the last moment. Vincent Holtzapple came in from behind and just poked that up. Poked that away, disrupted all the momentum for Wapak heading in, and now they're not quite giving up. Looking at looking at Wapakineta getting these second chance opportunities with the with these possessions. Not letting St. Mary's really get established and heading back the other way. Well, and it all starts with them connecting a couple passes together maintaining some possession. We talked about it in the first half. You know, they got to put some passes together. And what a score there by Kraft. What a ball lofted up by his teammate. Was able to put a head on it, find the back of the net. Wow, what another great goal by this Rough Riders team. It's Easton Kraft will take a break and come back and recap it on WOSN. We'll welcome you back to St. Mary's, where it's a 5-0 lead now for the Rough Riders. Yeah, Easton Crab with a header Let's goal, see. knocked in, ninth of his career, first of this campaign. And Kraft, the senior, third team all Western Buckeye League a year ago. Adds to the offensive showing for the Riders here tonight. And Josiah, I mean, they're coming off of a nine-goal win. They put nine up twice. Other than that, it's been a two-goal games. It's been, you know, when it rains, it pours here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we just talked so much about Walpock. And once again here, another opportunity to force a corner here by the Redskins team. But, you know, started out so well with some possession. You know, really, the ball has been, you know, on the defensive side of St. Mary's here early in the second half, but then give up a quick transition goal off, off the, the right side. I believe it was Quinn Holtzapple with the cross to his teammate, Easton Kraft, with a great header. And, you know, to finish. So, you know, just all that positivity for Walpock starting early, you know, just to give up that that tough goal, number five. Header try for Walpock goes up over the corner to the header, header over the goal. The and St. Mary's will get it right back as Walpock retreats. 32-30 left in the action today. St. Mary's on a on the path to pick up their second victory in the league with the 5 nothing advantage. You know, we can look down the schedule. I'm sure there's several circled for St. Mary's, one in a couple weeks. And with Shawnee, September the 22nd, and another one at the end of the regular season with Salina and several others mixed in there. But those are probably two of the biggies for St. Mary's coming on ahead of them. Yeah, as we talked about a little bit earlier, just how strong this league is. You know, Shawnee, we know all about Shawnee, you know, a team that's, you know, just had so much su success, you know, in the in this, you know, just a long time, long time success. And, you know, but these other teams have just grown and gotten better, and especially with the St. Mary's team, you know, just looking so well put together early in the season. You know, you don't want to be peaking right now, you know, but this is a very yeah, good St. Mary's team. That's Shawnee checked in at number five in the Division II poll. Most recent one, three-time defending WBL champions. And St. Mary's. One of those programs that's always been right there, right nipping at their heels year in and year out. 13 wins a year ago, finished second, third the year before that with 13 victories, double-digit wins, and 2019 also, and that was the only 
defeat of that year to Shawnee. In league play, she clarified. Now here's Kraft again, tries to turn that corner. Pass leaked up there before it was cleared out for Wapak. Possession's not quite over though. Kraft looks to turn up there at the top of the box. Derringer gives it a charge, but it's deflected. Preston Meyer, a nice tackle. Open look for, it was Jack Hurtenstein. Just a bit wide of the frame over the end line, results in a goal kick for the Redskins. Well, one thing, Walt Balk, you know, with that back line is that they've been kind of slow tonight. That step right away, you know, especially when St. Mary's receives that ball, allowing them to get their head up. And we see that, that possession that St. Mary's has had within 25 yards of goal being able to pass. And here's another one here. And great step there by that Walt Balk defensive line, you know, to step in front and not letting that ball go through. So, you know, when they have done it, they've done a really good job of stopping this attack. But... Um, you know, got to continue to do that, not allow them to turn, get their head up and find their teammates. Wyatt Chapman, a little contact there, got tangled up with Gavin Ainsworth. And Quinn Holtzapel will line up a kick here from about 25 out, bends it, bends it back, but just a little high. That was dangerously close to that top right corner. And Holtzapple has knocked a couple in like that tonight from pretty far out. Well, you can tell what he's trying to do with that bend on that ball. You see that ball spinning. You know, it's it's really moving in the air. You can tell he's, he's spent a, probably a lot of time working on that shot. And, you know, really difficult for the keeper, you know, to kind of judge the spin and where is it going to drop. And he does a really good job a couple times tonight, you know, put it in the, the back of the net a couple times from that, that spot. So, um, you know, just a really good player, you can tell, for this St. Mary's team and the way he moves and works with his teammates. And, you know, especially just watching their attack, you know, definitely an unselfish team, this St. Mary's team, as they move the ball quickly, you know, they find the open person, you know, they look for those runs behind the defensive line. And, you know, nobody's just, you know, taking random shots. They're really looking for each other. So, you know, you can definitely tell why, you know, they got the ranking 16 in the state. Yep. You know, certainly when you have players like that, that, that are unselfish, as you said, Josiah, and yeah, Hold Sample has found a, three goals tonight with the hat trick, three of the five, but you know, when you have so many different options up front, it becomes so difficult to defend. Well, and they have so many options, you know, with Kraft up top, with Holtzapel kind of controlling that middle, you know, of the soccer pitch. You know, they have number 11, Chapman, you know, really does a great job of holding up the ball when they pass it to him using his, you know, that frame to maintain possession. And then even in that last time, you know, you got outside backs that are getting high up the pitch, making those runs, you know, wide, you know, really spreading out this Walpog defense, you know, really a complete team. They get back towards the defensive end, but St. Mary is able to quash that pretty quickly. They played with the ball at their feet and their eyes facing the net for quite a bit tonight. And Holtzapple will march down to the far sideline, throw this in after Wampak last touched it before it left the chalk. Nice overhead of toss back in. Loose ball in the middle of the box. Not quite wrestled away. And now Wapakoneta able to turn around it, clear it away. Those are the type of plays that give heart, uh, heart attacks to coaches. Uh, that ball's bouncing around in the six yard box and nobody's clearing it. Nobody's, you know, diving for the ball. Um, you know, really makes your, your coach frustrated. And those are the type of plays you see, you know, in film session the next day going, guys, you know, we got to go for the ball. We got to clear. We got to, you know, put our body on the line. So, um, you know, a couple bounces around, kind of eerie moment, especially for a Walpock fan, you know, that ball getting close to the net. So, you know, we'll see if they can clean up some of those things here with the remaining 26 minutes to go. And so far, looks like St. Mary's will get a couple of, couple of bodies out onto the pitch. Bring in Brady, Brady triplet in. Freshman getting some action here, five nothing lead. 
And Quinn Holtample leaving the field of play. Right after the throw back in, we'll get outside of the field of play for a moment. Sometimes these are the these are the ways some of these possessions will go as we slowly inch our way down down the sideline. Not able to get to the mid middle part of the field and advance it that way, but Walpock will throw it right back in. Unable to keep that thing within the white lines. Vincent holds Apple. A great switch there Long. by number seven. Vincent holds Apple, finding his teammate wide. And as you see here, St. Mary's getting that possession like they've had so much tonight, about 20 to 25 yards out, maintaining the ball. You know, they've done a good job switching it from one side of the pitch to the other. And we'll see if they can get a cross in here from their outside back or get the ball into the middle. There's Chapman set up and a ball deflected to the top of the box just beyond the reach of Cody Burton. Now Wapak's headed the other direction. Pass ahead like Beach in the direction of Austin Bump, scooped up by Ballwig. Caden Ballwig is junior keeper for St. Mary's tonight and a relatively uneventful evening for him to this point. Had had a couple of attempts down that way, but. Walpock trying to maintain a little bit of possession here. See if they can work the ball. It's like they'll get possession here on the throw in. Trying to play a little bit quicker, see if they can up the tempo here. And great run there on the sides. See if we can get one across box. And just across. Just over the front of the frame. Right through the goal post. And a Results in a goal kick for the Rough Riders. Prior to the goal kick. Prior to rank probably the, the one of the top three Jeffrey. attacks for Wapak this evening. Holtz Apple with the restart. They had nothing to show for it. One goal of the second half for St. Mary's tonight. Eastern Craft increasing the four-goal halftime lead for St. Mary's up to five. Quinn Holtz Apple, a hat trick out there for the Rough Riders. A.J. Deringer with a goal for St. Mary's tonight additionally. And now here, playing with the ball at their feet, methodically. And an open field, there's Cody Burtz. Pass to the right side. And sent into the box for St. Mary's and picked on up for Case Bolt. A whole host of players about to come back in for St. Mary's and Wampak just below us here at the next stoppage of play. And a steal up there. Here's Kraft, trying to shake through a defender. Kraft Sets up the right shot. foot, up and Bolt. it's held onto by Gannon Casebolt, and that'll keep St. Mary's out from the back of the net as we getting close to the halfway mark of this second half tonight. Western Buckeye League soccer from St. Mary's. Oh, and Kraft continues to work up top as he's done all night. You know, dispossessed the Walpole player was able to, to get it out of his feet pretty quickly. And, you know, one thing, you know, just saw tonight is, you know, they take advantage of those little spaces that they have, you know, just, you know, inch or two of space, you know, getting that shot on frame. And they've done it multiple times tonight. And they continue uh, here as they, they push the ball and switch, um, switch the right side or the far side of the pitch away from us. As a Walpock defender steps in front of that last pass. And look at this for Austin Bump going right through traffic. Has a look. Second chance opportunity banged on through for Wapakoneta. Taylor Eccles cleans up the ricochet, and now the skins are on the board at the 22-10 mark of this second half. Take a quick breather and be back on WOSN. We welcome you back to St. Mary's where the Wapakoneta Redskins just broke up the shutout. A great second chance goal and a shot attempt for Austin Bump off of the keeper Caden Bellwig's mitts and then right 
on through off the foot of Taylor Eccles. The junior is able to get Wapakoneta on the board here. 22-10 was the, the time on the second half clock. Good look for Wapakoneta to just weave through traffic, get a shot clean, and then just able still to make things happen, hanging with it. Yeah, it was really set up by the run from Austin Bump. You know, started at the edge of his circle, side circle, you know, attacked that St. Mary's defense, you know, threw off a couple of defenders, got a good shot on the frame. The keeper for, uh, for this St. Mary's team just wasn't able to handle it, and that's when Taylor Eccles comes in and was able to finish it off from about eight yards out. So, you know, as we said, a little bit maybe of momentum for Walpock here as they get a goal. You know, can they keep the ball down on this side and force St. Mary's to play out? Able to get that first goal through. Saw with St. Mary's, they got several early in the game, and it, it, the hits just kept on coming through that first half. Held a 4-0 lead at the break, extended it to five early in the second half of this game. Wapakoneta, their first of the night at 22 with 10. Now we'll see how the reaction is. You know, Josiah, you've said it perfectly earlier on. I mean, the, the game and the momentum, you can kind of feel it. And maybe more than, more than you can witness it, obviously, on the scoreboard and things of that nature. But... We'll see how the reaction is after that first goal. Sometimes teams might let something up and it's a wake up call. Okay, we, we might have let up there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for St. Mary's here, it's an opportunity once again for Holtz Apple to get on top of the ball. Look at this ball. Ooh, just uh, it's off the top too high. of the net. You know, within about 40 yards out. You know, he can put it on frame yes. and it's been dangerous tonight, but, you know, now's the opportunity, like I said, for Walpaw. Can they, they continue to maintain a little possession? You know, this half they've had the ball a little bit more in the middle. Um, they weren't able to do that all, at all in the first half. You know, some of those late runs, you know, from the middle and those, you know, those nines, those forwards making those runs up top. And we'll see if they can gain to maintain some of that possession, you know, and find those runners making those runs, you know, behind the defense. There's a little run. Like Aiden Jeffrey sent that in and it deflected off of off of Wapakineta to bring up the fifth corner of the night for St. Mary's. And you know, look at the look at the shots on gold disparity tonight. You, know, you got 13 currently for. St. Mary's and Wapak with just three. Kind of tells the story of this game, how much in control St. Mary's has been. There's a header for Holtzapple and just kicked out from the front corner of the goal. Dylan Whitehead saves a goal. Excuse me, correction, it looked like Logan Lee. Able to keep that one out of the net, the junior. Looked like it was going to be the fourth goal of the night for Quinn Holtzapple, but Wapakoneta had the right man in the right place to keep that one off net. Well, and you could just see, you know, Quinn Holtzapple's eyes probably light up as that ball was coming. He knew he had a perfect header opportunity to find the, the left side of the net. And, you know, those are one of those decisions, you know, you talk about soccer, it's, it's a free-flowing game. You know, you don't have plays. You don't, you know, call number one like you do in basketball. Um, but those set pieces become so important, not only attacking-wise, but also defensively. How do you set up? And you saw Walpolk has had, had one of those players – on the far side post, and it saved another goal. Well done by last line of defense, and here is Lee trying to track down a ball into the box for Wapak, but it'll be scooped up by Ballwig. And St. Mary's hands it back upfield, and met by Preston Meyer. Meyer ushers it ahead for a moment. Kyle Beach, a wide pass to Whitehead. He knocked ahead to Lee. And redirected by St. Mary's on that back end of the defense near the end line. And turned up field nicely by Vincent Holtzapple. This is Jeffries. Pass to the right side. Now St. Mary's, a little tempo there on that far end. And they lose the footing, and Wapak bumped it out. A couple of changes for St. Mary's. A.J. Daringer and Doug Rupert back in. 
17 to play in the contest, 5-1 on the scoreboard tonight. St. Mary's leading Wapakoneta in league play. Cleared out by the Redskins. So we slow down here for just a minute. We remind you, uh, join us on WTLW TV 44 Friday nights at 10 o'clock all year for the Sports Report season number 18 of the fine show. Patrick Hamler will walk you through the full hour of the most comprehensive yeah, football right coverage the around the area all Good season team. long, Fridays at 10 Take over on to TV to 44. Must see TV there when you're coming in and get you set up, locked and loaded for the weekend football broadcasting slate, WOSN.TV for the full schedule this weekend. We see St. Mary's leading 5-1, Josiah now possessing the ball a little bit more after that Wapak goal. Well, and that's the way, you know, you want to kill some momentum, possess the ball. You know, and we saw St. Mary's here, you know, give it away. But, you know, there's long spurts of possession for this St. Mary's team. You know, I, I really like the way that they play, you know, especially once they get the ball. They're really looking for those long switches to try to switch the point of attack. You know, that's been so successful forcing Wampalk defense to shift from one side of the pitch to the other. You know, and that's where they found those gaps with Kraft. Um, you know, running in behind and finding those lanes um, because they've done such a great job of switching the point of attack and then finding those little holes in this Walpock defense. Possess it right in the middle of the offense. Bumped ahead for Keller. And Wapakoneta is able to get around the ball and not able to keep it in bounds there on that far Walpack side. Throw in Darrier. St. Mary's had four in the first half and the 34, 27, two within a minute of each other. 17 to go before halftime. At one, seven minutes in to the second half before Wapak got their first goal of the game with 22-10 remaining before the end of regulation. We had 14 and a half to play. St. Mary's with the ball at their feet. Man goes down, an open look towards the, the goal, but Wapak's defense bending and not breaking there, able to redirect the ball coming up this side of the field. Yeah, some really good possession here as it's just a strike from Holtzapple there oh, as he's kind of taken out the um, after the shot, the but Redskins. you know, it's just really, you know, refreshing to watch their style of play here with St. Mary's, just that those one-two passing, you know, finding the cutters in that tight space. You know, it didn't amount to anything, but it's just holding the ball, it's possessing, it's forcing Walpole back line. into their end, not allowing to get any momentum going forward. Here they gets behind the St. Mary's D, Whitehead and a sprint down there for Wapakoneta near the Holtz Apple. And those off of the riders will stay oh, with Wapa. Toss goes in to Kyle Beach. Beach had been a pretty quiet tonight for Wapa Canada with St. Mary's in a good job neutralizing one of the better attackers on the Wapa end. Turn and a try for Eccles and deflected. But Wapa can continue to give it a try. There's a second chance look for Preston Meyer, knocked down by Caden Baldwin. Well, some good possession down on their side there for Walpock as they were able to make string a couple passes together and get a shot on frame. And you know, as St. Mary's right back down, it seems like the game is kind of going up and down the entire pitch, you know, from box to box here recently. So. You know, maybe some tired legs out there, you know, from both teams, you know, playing here this full 70 minutes. Um, but we'll see, you know, who can sustain their possession and get a couple more shots to finish out this game. As the lights take, obviously, full effect throughout this second half, we were getting close to that edge at halftime, right before halftime. But now under the lights, it's cooled down. It's a really pleasant evening, good soccer night over here at St. Mary's. 12 to play, and for the Rough Riders, 
It's been a good night on that end on the scoreboard, 5-1 with the lead. We have a stoppage here. Penalty assessed against the Redskins. Results in a direct kick for the Rough Riders, which will be taken There's another direct for St. Mary's. Holt Sample will line it up for Memorial. Clock stopped at 11.58 of the second half. Starts to line it up, bend it back towards the goal and covered up by Case Bolts. Another great try from deep for Quinn Holtz Apple, trying to add to his three goal total. See so how the Redskins can maneuver here. Not much doing beyond that defense in the midfield, and now we got body contact, and it resulted in an infraction. It was against Wapak. See both teams getting a little bit more physical here yep. in the game, and sometimes you see that with tired legs. <laughs> Certainly. A little more, uh, you know, not wanting to run, so you, you dive in or you give a little bit of push. Long, deep kick to the top of the box. Over the head of a couple of rough riders. Here's Aiden Jeffries with the give from... Connor Rust, ripped away by Wapak. Here's Austin Bump in the middle of the pitch. Meyer, and it's taken away from his possession, and Meyer tackle in the middle of the pitch. Take that back. But the Riders pick the possession up once more. Now Wapak gonna play it back, trying to get there themselves reset here. St. Mary's rips it away, Holtz Apple, and a good step in front by Meyer. As you knew, Holtz Apple was getting ready to gear up and let it rip. Yeah, you could tell he was getting his body in position to, to put another strike and uh, stop there from the Walpock defense. So both teams are kind of trying to find their footing here. Here's Wyatt Chapman. Pokes out Daringer, and just wide of the crossbars. And wholesale changes for St. Mary's. Wapak will send it. Ross Honigford and Connor Coffey back in. And among the changes, Tony Zhang in there for St. Mary's. Kraft back on. Connor Rust, and seeing action for the first time tonight for the Rough Riders. Number 21, Maddox Hurtenstein. I also get Maddox Hernstein and for the first time for St. Mary's. Goal kick, Lenhart. An opportunity to get some of the younger guys uh, some playing time in a, in a big WBL matchup here. So as we have another foul on St. Mary's, a little push in the back on number one, Taylor Eichels. Opportunity for Walpole to get up the field a little bit higher. Zang getting in there, his third half of the year. Nice. Good experience out there for him. There's a long kick down the field, and Case Bolt just lets it leak inside the box where he's allowed to pick it up. We get inside of nine minutes to go before the end of regulation here. St. Mary's leads by a score of five to one. Four of those came in the first half today. And three total from Quinn Holtz Apple is a hat trick today for the senior. A look inside, and there's Kraft coming around the left corner. And it's poked away momentarily, killing the momentum there. Kraft will get the pass back from Rupert. Pass into the middle and could not get cleared away, so Holtz Apple with a strike there, and it skips past the keeper, Case Bolt, for the fourth time today. Goal number four on the night, and what another great ball by Kraft. Found some space out wide, 
crossed it with his left foot. It was a good cross across the 18 and found his teammate waiting for a strike and put it in the back of the net. 6-1 St. Mary's will step out for a second here on WOSN. St. Mary's holds now a 6-1 advantage over the Wapping Canada Redskins. Four goals tonight for Quinn Holtzapple. The la latest one, eight minute and two second mark left in this contest. And the Rough Riders breaking the trend here recently of these two programs playing to very close contests, one goal games in each of the meetings a year ago. The two previous years both ended in regular season ties before Wapak had their last victory between the two schools in 2018. St. Mary's in a big way has broken it back their direction. Looking for their third consecutive victory in two years over Wapak. And a long and a peck of a strike knocked away one time by Ballwig. The attempt there was by Beach. And that was about, I think that's the first shot he has had on goal tonight. And the second chance try knocked away also. Corner kick for Wapuk. Oh, what what two great saves there. Not only the, the hard strike from the beginning, but had to get up very quickly you know, for the header and was able to get a paw on it, knock it out wide. So two great saves on one possession there from the St. Mary's goalkeeper. And see what they can, Wapak can do on this corner. It's knocked away, so it goes back to Beach. He'll float it back inside the box where it's trickled out by St. Mary's. Here's bump in the middle for Wapak. Turns around that ball, sends it just wide to the left. Last touch by Wapak Canada, so a goal kick will be here for St. Mary's. Bump's had a lot of success here in this second half, going to his left uh, on his stronger foot, as we saw there, is did a couple feints, got it to his left foot, striked it just a couple feet wide. And that free kick comes up and sent down the field. Nobody around there for St. Mary's, at least initially. Now the Redskins trying to play the ball ahead, and it's leaked back to the back end of their defense. Lenhart steps through a couple of defenders there for St. Mary's, and redirected back into the middle of the pitch. Hit five minutes to play in the contest, St. Mary's just over five minutes into the game, got their first goal and still riding the momentum of their most recent six goals later. Well, it's really been the blueprint for success. Attack early, you know, get on the board, force the other team to, to have to push up a little bit higher, you know, try to score some goals. And St. Mary's has continued to attack, put the pressure on Walpock the entire night, you know, forcing them, you know, to turn the ball over and in turn, St. Mary's has just attacked the goal over and over and over, you know, led by, you know, their senior, Quinn Holtzapple. High ball near midfield, headed back. This is Austin Bump for the Redskins. Trying to go in the direction of Kyle Beach. It'll be a foot race of the ball. Tried to step on a dime and head back the other way, but Good one-on-one -on -one between a Keller and Beach down at near the goal. So corner kick for Wapakoneta, and it'll be Beach to do the honors. Wapak gets some fresh legs out there as they set this corner kick up. Well, we've talked so much about this attack. 
of St. Mary's, but you know you got to give a little bit of love to the center backs. You know out there had done a really good job. Number seven Vincent Holtzapple and also number 13 Braden Keller have been up to the task tonight. You know walpox has got a lot of speed up front, and they've done a really good job of keeping everything in front of them, forcing them, you know, to play wide and get it out of their area. So, you know, got to give a little love to the defenders also. Yeah, they've done such a marvelous job. Forcing the pressure, cutting off opportunities, and allowing the offense to maximize their output tonight. They've done just that, 6-1, to one, up on our yeah, scoreboard this right. evening with St. Mary's leading the way over Wapak. Three to play in our action tonight. Four Quinn holds Apple goals. Single scores by A.J. Derringer and Easton Kraft. Tallies the sixth for St. Mary's. Wapakoneta. Taylor Eccles is lone score for the Redskins. Ball on Last the far side the of the field, and now Wapak will have a throw in, in near midfield. Look to just set a couple of things up and, and on a positive note, I'm sure, here at the end of the contest. But an open look knocked away by Taylor. Make that for Brady Keaton Leonard's. Brady Triplett, the nearest to it for St. Mary's. If my eyes are telling me the truth. <laughs> Sometimes hard to see from our Sometimes. vantage point. That's okay. But as long as we can read the scoreboard, that, that's three quarters of the battle. Throw it. So from the corner for St. Mary's trying to line themselves up. Last touch, Rough Riders. Now it looks like a turnover down there in the corner. Yeah, give it right back to St. Mary's. Toss back in for the Riders. Look into the middle, and uh, not quite able to keep it in front of him. Wapak able to clear it away. Just to recap our scoring here today as we hit the final minute. Sam Aries got on the board first with a Quinn Holt sample goal with 34-43 left in the first half, 22-42 in the first half. They got their second in there by A.J. Derringer. Third score was at 17-42 by Holt Sample. He scored again 40 seconds later to make it a 4-0 game at the halftime break. Then into the second, Easton Kraft scored just six minutes and some change into the second stanza. Taylor Eccles scored for Wapakoneta with 22-10 left in the action, and then 8-0-2, that's when Holtzapple knocked his fourth score of the contest through there for St. Mary's in an impressive 6-1 win right now is just moments away for St. Mary's, and I, you know, Josiah, you look at Nine, you look at this team, eight, really seven, impressed and show that they could five, make some noise throughout four, the rest of the year with three, a big league win this evening. Well, that's all you can say is just impressive. You know, St. Mary's came in with a plan, and they executed all night. You know, got it started early. You know, as Walpock felt like they were a little bit timid to start the game, where St. Mary's wanted to possess the ball, was able to move the ball quickly from side to side, found those gaps all night in this Walpock defense, and was able to capitalize time and time again. You know, and a great win overall for the St. Mary's Rough Riders team. We'll get some final thoughts when we come back. Final score 6 1 from St. Mary's. Riders beat Walpock tonight on WOSN. Welcome back to St. Mary's. Garrett Mansfield with you, along with St. Mary's head coach, Josh Hurtenstein. And coach, you know, you come out here, a 6-1 victory over Wapakoneta. You've played some nip and tuck games the last couple of years between the two of you. Came out with a 4-0 lead at halftime and closed out 6-1, as we just said. Big game from Quinn Holt sampled. A lot to take away here. But I got to tell you, were you a little surprised by how this thing turned out? We, we thought we could dominate possession. Um, that that 
the goals from Quinn were uh, more than we expected, but it was uh, definitely a good game for us. Um, we thought we'd come out on top, but it was, like I said, better than we thought. And it wasn't just confidence from, from you as a program. It sounded like Quinn had some confidence going into tonight, and he really shined as the lights came on. Yeah, yeah. he uh, mentioned before the game he felt like he was in the zone, and uh, you could see that out there, so I'm pretty happy for him. Yeah, so good start to the season. You're also 6-1 and one with the 6-1 and one win. You got a couple of big games on the way. I'm sure that Shawnee game is circled, but you got to take it a game at a time. You can talk a little bit about the season so far and what you like, what you'd like to improve on. Um, we're a possession team, as you can see, and just that's uh, something you work on week to week. And as, as we build towards Shawnee, because, I mean, they are until – they lose, they're the top in the league. So um, we'll just keep working, improving, and trying to get to them. All right, were you 2-0 in the league as well? Good start to league play. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll let you get back to the team, and we'll close up here at St. Mary's, where the final score is 6-1. to St. Mary's knocking off Wapakoneta, rivalry game, good soccer today, and you know, Josiah comes in and shows me how short I am. So that, that's always good, but Josiah, you know, good good contest by and by. You know, St. Mary's really possession team and really showed defensively that, you know, they had the offense, but the defense really shined today too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is a very complete team, as we saw tonight, as Coach said, possession Based style, you know, team. They move the ball very well. They look for each other. They're unselfish. You know, as a team, they're always looking for the best pass and the best shot. And we saw a well-rounded team and you know a well-deserved 6-1 win tonight. Yep, they got it done. That's how it happened. St. Mary's six, Wapakoneta one. Thanks to our crew, Jacob O'Neill tonight, Megan Sherrick, putting it all together for you back at the studio. Thanks to Ben Rife, Mark Shine for getting us all set up. Thanks to the coaches, the staff here at St. Mary's, the coaches and staff at Wapakoneta, and for the privilege as well to showcase high school soccer in the state of Ohio. Thanks to all of you for making, making it possible, and we'll talk to you next time. And thank you very much for watching High School Sports on the West Ohio Sports Network.